Good morning. Debbie here with uh, Haley. Haley is my percher on cross. She's about 15, 16 years old. And I've had her since she was young. And she's been one of my really great teachers. Because back when she was young, um, I looked at horsemanship differently than I do now. I knew how to ride pretty well. I knew how to use my aids. But what I didn't know is how to get her to be a willing participant. Because she's very dominant by nature. And even though she's not real high in the pecking order, she strives to be every day. And she tries to challenge the other horses for the alpha role. So she's very opinionated. She wants to know, why do I have to do what you asked me to do? So um, she's really taught me a lot. And so just knowing how to ride and how to use my aids was not good enough for her. Because what she would do back then is she would pin her ears. She'd, she'd, um, she'd have wrinkles in her nose. She'd you know raise her head up high. She'd try to rub me into the fence. Um, she would refuse to go forward. Uh, because she wasn't going to have any of that. So I had to learn how to be different for her. So uh, what we're going to talk about today is how to um, use our, our energy and how to have really good positive thoughts when you're working with a horse because they're masters at reading um, the energy and thoughts of predators. So if I was to try, like in her younger days, if I was to try to make her do something, she would be like, game on, you and what army, let's fight. So I, I had to put her away in the pasture for a while because I, I, I didn't know what to do. I just, I, I didn't have enough information to be good enough for her. And nowadays, she's light, she's responsive, she's um, cooperative most of the time, as long as I start right. Um, and, the, and starting right means to, that I have to have positive thoughts. I have to be very pleased with all her tries. Um, I have to uh, bring up the energy in my body. Kind of like if you're going to go, um, you get excited if you're going to go dance or something and, and you know, you're about to go have some fun. I got to get that kind of excitement in me. Otherwise, you know, she, she doesn't want to participate. So I'm going to try, uh, she's fresh out of the pasture. I have no idea what we're going to get with her. I haven't spent much time at all with her in the last um, several months uh, because I've been pretty busy. And um, so we're just going to see. We're just going to play. We're going to see what we get. And because I don't have a cameraman with me, we're going to use the cones, the circle around the cones, as um, our guide to what we're going to be doing. And circles are very hard for a, a, a dominant lazy horse. You know, because they're like, why? Why do I have to go in circles? So I have to try and make it interesting for her. So what I'm going to do, I'm just riding in a bareback pad and a halter and lead rope. So I want to see, do I, can I bend her? The other thing I had to learn is when I bend her head around like that, she didn't like it at first, but when I went and I pat her face, it really softened her emotions. So, you know, praise to her means a lot. So she's very light. See, I could just use one finger and she'll come over Be because I, I reward it and I'm very pleased with all her efforts and that makes a big difference to her. So now I'm gonna lift up the reins. I'm gonna ask for a little bit of backup. And I do that by sitting back on my pockets a little bit, looking up. I use my reins last. I use my seat first. And if she doesn't respond, I can wiggle my legs just a little bit. And I'm going to wait for a little bit better response, a little bit more speed there. Good. And it's not straight yet, but that's okay. She's just waking up, you know. So I don't expect her to come out and to perform and be perfect. So I'm going to see right here, if can I move her hind in? And I'm going to use my, my calf muscle on her leg with just very light pressure. If she doesn't respond, I'm going to tap with my hand. She responds, I take the pressure off. Then I can put it back on, take it off. Put it back on, take it off. If she's a little lazy, I could just do a little bit of tapping there, and that helps her to respond. I'm going to try the other side. Good. Put it on, take it off. Put it on, take it off. Now I'm going to ask her front end to come around. 
Good. Put it, put the leg on, take it off. And I don't do it hard. If I need additional pressure, I use rhythmic pressure with a little tapping motion there to encourage her to try a little bit more. And she's giving me minimal effort right here. So I'm going to wait till I get a little bit better response. Put it on, take it off. Put it on, take it off. Good. Now I'll ask for forward because she uses forward against me. So if I come out here and I say, let's just go in a circle, there's going to be a lot of resistance there. So I asked her to do something else at first. She's going to run over the cone. <laughs> <laughs> because she doesn't like to do anything perfectly. <laughs> and I just laugh at it. It's okay. It's all right. How can I get her, <laughs> she's thinking about doing that with that cone, so how can I get her to start having fun with me? So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to ask for a couple transitions, and I'm going to probably, I'm going to start at a walk here, and then I'm going to ask. She doesn't want to stay on the circle real well yet, so I'm just going to ask for her to come over a little bit, there we go. Now I'm going to ask for a trot, and I do that by smiling, bringing up some energy in my body like I'm about to go dancing. And she feels that energy, and then she's, she'll be more responsive to it. So I'm going to do about a lap here. Oh, now she's starting to offer me the trot. I mean, the canter. So I didn't really want her to go into a canter, so I just lowered my energy a little bit. So, but, but that's because she felt that excitement in me, and that makes her want to participate a little bit more. Now she's sneezing, which just, just letting out a little bit of tension that she had inside of her. Now she's offering me a trot, and I'm like, good girl. And now she's thinking about cantering again. And she's doing that because my energy in my body is very positive. So when I ask her to go, I use the energy first, and then I'll do a light squeeze with my legs if I need to. And then the moment she starts to trot, I take my legs off of her, and I just relax my legs. Very good girl. I'm going to ask her to stop and I stop moving in my body. Now I'm going to start backing up with my hips just like she is. I'm using my hips and then I'm going to ask her to change direction. Good girl. Good. Good. I'm going to smile. I'm going to get excited like I'm about ready to go out on the dance floor because I love to dance. And then that makes her happy. And then she's willing to participate. I'm going to ask her down to a walk by getting a walking motion in my body, which is just the same motion that she's doing. I'm, I'm using my hips to move in the same motion that she is. And every horse is just a little bit different, so you've got to find out. Now she's offering me the trot. You've got to find out, you know, you've got to kind of relax on your horse and find out <clears throat> what your particular horse's motion is. Just kind of move with that motion. Your hips move with that motion. Because if I, if I quit moving, look at what she does. She stops. If I start walking in my body and I smile and I bring up my energy a little bit, she starts to walk. Good girl. Letting out more tension. And that tension, even though it doesn't look like she's uh, tense, what it is is a mental resistance that she has at the beginning of a lesson. So I have to be very particular when I work with her to keep a positive attitude in her. I can't make her do anything. I have to encourage her through positive stuff. Like if she starts to trot now, I'm happy. I'm like, good girl. And that makes her feel good and it makes her want to do more for me. So I'm very happy when she does that. I'm going to come to the center of the circle here. I'm going to lightly use my reins. Every time she comes a little bit the way I want, I release that pressure. And it's just a halter right now, but now I use my legs just a little bit because I sat back and she didn't start moving much yet. Now I'm going to ask for forward. I'm going to start forward motion and getting happy. <sighs> Now, your horse might not understand this at, at first, especially if they're used to tuning people out because they don't know when they're right. They don't always know what the right answer is. So you might have to back up what you're doing with some rhythmic pressure, which is uh, um, just a motivating pressure. Like if, if I want her to start going right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get happy squeeze a little bit, then I'm going to start tapping with some rhythm until she goes, and then I take all that pressure off. 
I stop moving, she stops moving. I sit back on my pockets, put my feet forward a little bit, a little rhythmic motion. I'm not kicking on her. I'm not even touching her rib cage. I'm just adding some rhythmic motion. Rhythmic motion uh, backs up my whatever my direct pressure is like I have a tiny bit on the reins here not much at all I don't need much because I can't get lightness if I don't start with lightness and if I don't go back to lightness I can add additional encouraging motivating pressure whatever you might want to call it but I have to go straight back to lightness because I always want my horse responding as light as possible so if it begins a little bit heavy I would just repeat what I'm doing, like going backward and forward, until there's lightness. So if that was heavy, she's offering, starting to offer a trot. Now I'm going to sit back, look up, ask for back. If it's heavy, I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing until she offers a little bit better, uh, until there's some improvement. Once there's a little bit of improvement, I'm going to stop, I'm going to reward, reward, reward. And then I'm going to move on to something else. Because I want to end everything that I do with my horse, with my horse feeling successful. And they're only going to feel successful if they have a release of pressure when they try, when there's a little bit of improvement in whatever task you're doing, you get off of it, you reward, 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 and you get off the subject. If I was to do it again and again, they would she would go, what's the purpose? And I'm never good enough, and I never want her feeling that way. So anyway, that's a little tip for today. I hope you enjoyed it. Go out, have some fun with your horses. Remember to reward all your horse's efforts, to have positive energy, and positive thoughts and feelings when you're working with them, because they will feel it, and they will respond better the better we get at it, the better they're going to get. So thank you for watching. Have a great day from uh, Haley and Debbie. Bye-bye.